For many people around the world, early February is a time where you prepare for the Super Bowl. Maybe buy a few boxes, plan for a big party, or get ready to email your boss that you'll be missing the following Monday. But for MLB fans, the Super Bowl signifies the last major sporting event before baseball begins. Earlier this week, San Diego Studios announced the cover athlete for the most popular baseball video game on the market, MLB The Show, with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. getting the honors. This decision was pretty controversial, and many fans gave their two cents on who they thought the cover should have been. And this got me thinking, out of every player that graced the cover of this game, how many of them deserved it? How did their career play out? And what are they doing today? We'll answer all of those questions in this video, but first, welcome to the War Room. We're officially on the road to 100k, so please subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight to it. Before San Diego Studios existed, its parent company, Sony, was responsible for making the games. So while these games I'm covering now didn't officially have the show as part of their title, it's part of the same franchise, starting with MLB 98, with the cover athlete being Bernie Williams. Although Bernie didn't even come close to making the Hall of Fame, his career numbers aren't too shabby at all. This five-time All-Star was a key piece of the Yankees dynasty in the 90s. He's a four-time World Series champion, four-time Gold Glove winner, and finished with a 297 career average. Since then, Bernie has been pursuing his passion as a guitarist, where he often plays concerts and is pretty much just living his life following a very good 16-year MLB career. Plenty of other guys that could have been on the cover instead of him, especially on the Yankees in the late 90s, but overall, not a bad choice. MLB 99 was Cal Ripken Jr. As I record this in 2024, Cal is easily in the top three of best players to ever be on this game. His career resume is absolutely insane. The man has literally done it all. He's an absolute legend, and this was a great choice. He's often on MLB Network and Fox talking about the game. He's been named a special senior advisor of MLB by Commissioner Rob Manfred, and just a few days ago, it was announced that he's part of the new ownership group for the Baltimore Orioles. MLB 2000 was Mo Vaughn. Vaughn was an MVP winner and a three-time All-Star in his career. He finished with a 293 average and 328 homers. Again, good career, but there were definitely some better options on the table. Although this is MLB 2000, they used to release the game prior to the season before that year. So this game was actually released before the 1999 season. 1999 to 2002 was of course the period of Randy Johnson's four consecutive Cy Young wins, which would have been the perfect choice in my opinion, but obviously hindsight is 2020. Today, Mo Vaughn is a coach in the South Florida Collegiate Baseball League, where he's developing the next generation of young stars. MLB 2001 featured the first NL player on the cover, Chipper Jones. Hard to argue against this one, his career resume speaks for itself. Kinda crazy how he only made 8 all-star teams in his 19 year career, because looking at the numbers, you can argue he probably should have made 11 or 12. Nonetheless, this Hall of Famer is still part of the game today, as he has been a hitting consultant for the Braves these past few years. MLB 2002 was his partner in crime, Andrew Jones. I personally think think Andrew Jones has an extremely underrated career. He won 10 gold gloves and made 5 all-star teams in 16 seasons, and he just barely lost the 2005 NL MVP voting to Albert Pujols despite leading MLB in home runs and the National League in RBIs. Going back-to-back -back Braves was a bold choice for the cover, but I don't hate this selection. Jones recently missed out on the Hall of Fame after his 7th consecutive year on the ballot, though he's been trending upwards in recent years and it's very possible he can get it done before his eligibility expires. 2003 Three belongs to Barry Bonds. Bonds doesn't really need any introduction, he's statistically the most accomplished baseball player of all time. This game was released during the middle of his four MVP finishes in a row, so they couldn't have released a game with Bonds as the cover athlete during a better time in his career. He now works in the Giants front office where he is the special advisor to the CEO. 2004 was the year of Sean Green. While Green had a solid career in the bigs, I think it's safe to say this one goes down as another miss. Remember, this game was released in March of 2003, so he was coming off a 2002 year that was great where he finished top 5 in MVP voting. But since this game came out, he never made an all-star team, never won any award, and just had 5 very mid-seasons to wrap up his career. Today, he is a founder of a company called Greenfly, which is a software company based out of Santa Monica, California. MLB 2005 featured probably the worst player ever named a cover athlete for a baseball game, Eric Chavez. In a time period with Jeter, A-Rod, Pujols, and Ichiro, they landed on this guy. He's the only player in this video to not make a single all-star team in his career. He did win 6 gold gloves, but unfortunately that alone doesn't make you good enough for the title of a cover athlete in my opinion. Chavez is still involved in the game today as the Mets hitting coach. MLB 2006 is Vladimir Guerrero. After two weak covers in 04, 
04 and 05, this was a pretty good bounce back selection. Vlad was coming off an MVP year in 2004 when this game released in March of 2005, and he made several all-star teams since. Since his Hall of Fame induction in 2018, he's been pretty quiet off the field, but he's often seen at Blue Jays games cheering on his son, who we'll get to later in the video. And this is where the torch was passed from MLB to MLB The Show, as the game was beginning to be made by San Diego Studios. Also, it's important to note that they finally started releasing the game during the same year the cover said, instead of a full year prior. So in February 2006, we got MLB The Show 2006, with David Ortiz on the cover. Another very good selection, especially since 06 was the year Big Poppy hit a career-high 54 home runs along with 137 RBIs. He was an absolute beast in his Boston career, and I imagine people in 2006 were very hyped to see this futuristic cover for the inaugural release of MLB The Show. Today, he's a Fox Sports analyst, joining former rivals on the panel, A-Rod and Derek Jeter. The Show 07 featured David Wright. I gotta give San Diego Studios credit, because at the time, this cover made a ton of sense. Wright was entering his age 24 season, where he just finished top 10 in MVP voting and was an all-star. It's a shame he got plagued with injuries during his career, and it's really a question of what could have been, but he still retired with respectable numbers overall. Wright's retirement has been pretty quiet, but he does seem like one of those guys that could be on a team's coaching staff or in the booth sometime in the future. 2008 was the year of Ryan Howard. If you were a baseball fan during the late 2000s, you would know just how much of a beast Ryan Howard was. Following his Rookie of the Year win in 2005, he won NL MVP in 2006, hitting 58 home runs with 149 RBIs. In his cover year, he was the runner-up behind Albert Pujols, for MVP, though he did play a key role in winning the World Series with the Phillies. At his peak, he was a Hall of Fame talent, but similar to David Wright, injuries really affected any long-term consistency. In 2024, he works for the US government, where he's a member of the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition, serving a two-year term. 2009 featured the second Red Sox in four years, Dustin Pedroia. Similar to Ryan Howard, Pedroia won Rookie of the Year and then followed it up with an MVP win in his sophomore season. To me, he's one of those guys where you kind of associate him with a certain era of baseball. Personally, when I think about the landscape of Major League Baseball from 2007 to 2013, guys like Dustin Pedroia or Tim Lincecum come to mind immediately. Ironically though, he's in that same category of guys like David Wright and Ryan Howard that just couldn't stay on the field long enough to fully show what they were capable of. He hasn't done much since retiring officially in 2021, though he will be inducted into the Red Sox Hall of Fame in March. He's another one of those guys that you could definitely see in a permanent coaching role in the future. The show 2010 and 2011 both belong to Joe Maurer. Not only is he the only player to be on back-to-back -back covers, but he's also the only guy to be on it more than once in his entire career. I don't think anyone will ever break Allen Iverson's record of being on five consecutive 2K covers, but back-to-back -back is still pretty good. Maurer won MVP with the Twins in 2009, where he posted a 365 batting average, the highest ever for a catcher. Maurer spent all 15 seasons with the Twins, and last week, he became the youngest person ever elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Breaking Maurer's back-to-back -back streak is 2012 Adrian Gonzalez. Certainly a weird choice looking back on it, but kind of made sense at the time. Agon was coming off four consecutive All-Star selections, where he also had multiple top 10 finishes for MVP. Unfortunately, his power numbers declined significantly following the 2011 season, and he only made one more All-Star team in the remaining seven years of his career. During the offseason this year, he was interviewed by the Padres for the manager managerial position, but didn't land the job. Other than that, not much else to talk about. The show 2013 was Andrew McCutcheon. Kutch is another dude who defines a certain era of baseball, and if he had to define one year specifically, it would without a doubt be 2013. After being announced as the cover athlete entering the season, he went on to win the first and only MVP award of his career. Following his fifth All-Star selection in a row in 2015, his splits across the board very slowly started to dip lower and lower. He's the first player in this video to still be active today, as he is currently preparing to enter the 16th season of his career in his second stint with the Pirates. 2014 was Miguel Cabrera. San Diego Studios had almost no other choice but to put Miggy on the cover this year since he was coming off back-to-back -back AL MVP wins in 2012 and 2013. Honestly, considering he won the Triple Crown in 2012, it's surprising he didn't get the 2013 cover, and then McCutcheon got the 2014 cover after winning 2013 NL MVP. They kind of swapped it, but either way, they were both very 
deserving. Miggy's baseball reference page is incredible to look at. Everyone already knows he was a monster, but it's cool to remind yourself of just how great he was. On top of this insane resume, it's important to mention only three players ever have 500 plus career home runs, 3,000 plus career hits, and a higher batting average than 300. Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and Miguel Cabrera. He's all around one of the greatest hitters of all time. He announced his retirement following last season, and he will without a doubt be a unanimous first ballot Hall of Famer when the time comes. 2015 is Yasiel Puig. There was tons of hype surrounding Puig when he debuted in 2013. However, he never really lived up to it, as 2014 was the only all-star season of his career, which lasted just seven years. While he is one of the most entertaining guys to ever play, he really just couldn't stay healthy. He's currently playing ball in Venezuela and was involved in yet another brawl just last week. Gotta love the guy. 2016 is the 2015 AL MVP Josh Donaldson. He's the first guy to officially represent the north of the border on the MLB The Show American version. At his peak, he was the best third baseman in the game, but other than that MVP, his career resume is pretty lackluster. He's been on six different teams since this game dropped, and entering his age 36 season with the Brewers, he's kind of regressed into a role player at best. The Show 2017 was a major throwback in Ken Griffey Jr. While this cover was way overdue, it's one of the most iconic show covers and kind of marked a positive turning point in the game's popularity. To this day, he's the only show cover athlete to be retired when the game released. But it doesn't even matter, he's all around one of the greatest players ever, and nobody's complaining at this selection. Griffey actually has a strong passion for photography, and once in a while you'll see him pop up at different sporting events just taking some pics, which is honestly kind of funny because it's a little wholesome to see one of the goats just pursuing a hobby that has nothing to do with baseball. They followed this up with another hit in Aaron Judge. People complain about this cover at the time, and it had to have only been because he's a Yankee, because this was a great choice in my opinion. In his 2017 rookie season, he won Rookie of the Year, broke the all-time rookie home run record, and was runner-up for MVP, which by the way is arguably one of the biggest robberies ever, but that's besides the point. Since then, he's made four more All-Star teams, he broke the American League home run record with 62 in 2022, and rightfully won MVP that season. Entering 2024, he's the Yankee captain, a top player in the game, and is still in in pursuit of his first ring. 2019 belongs to Bryce Harper, another great choice. Harper's been deemed a baseball prodigy since his teenage years, and whether you love him or hate him, you gotta respect his ability to live up to the hype. He won Rookie of the Year, he won MVP with the Nats in 2015, and again with the Phillies in 2021. Though in his 2021 MVP season, he somehow wasn't an all-star, which is kinda insane. But at this point, he's just adding to his legacy and will most likely be headed to Cooperstown one day. 2020 is Javier Baez. While he had back-to-back all-star seasons in 2018 and 19, the 2020 COVID year is where his career started to significantly drop off. While he's dealt with several injuries since 2021, even when he's on the field, he's not doing much. He'll be entering his 11th season in 2024 with the Tigers as he aims to get back to the star player he once was. The show 2021 is Fernando Tatis Jr. 21 was definitely Nando's best season of his career so far. He blasted 42 homers with 97 RBIs and made his only all-star game while finishing top three in MVP voting. He missed all of 2022 from a combo of injuries and a performance enhancing drug suspension, and he followed that up with a decent season in 2023. I think Tatis will be playing with a big chip on his shoulder this season because he's going to have to beat this narrative that he needs steroids to be a star player. MLB The Show 2022 was the one and only Shohei Otani. This is one of those rare cases where instead of San Diego Studios predicting the next star of the future, they made the simple and obvious yet correct choice. Otani won MVP in 2021 and 2023, he signed a record-breaking deal with the Dodgers in the offseason, and he's the best player in baseball today. But the 2022 cover was the right decision, not really much else to say. Last year, in 2023, they followed it up with Jazz Chisholm. A lot of people, including myself, considered this a miss so far. Again, San Diego Studios is trying to gamble on a player potentially becoming a superstar versus picking someone more deserving who's never been on it. In my opinion, if Jazz didn't have dyed hair, wear chains, and play in Miami, he wouldn't have even been considered. I mean, almost every other player in this video has been playing the game of baseball on their cover, but Jazz is literally just holding up chains on his cover, which makes this seem like more of a player marketing tactic than anything else. And lastly, the 2024 MLB The Show cover athlete announced this week, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladdy is still young in his career and has shown superstar potential. I'm kinda in between on this decision because while he is a great player, it just feels like a weird point in his career to give it to him.
Beckham. The hype of when he entered the league has died down, and it's not like he's coming off a phenomenal MVP caliber season. And again, there's so many more deserving guys as of right now. Apparently, it's a rule that if a player is on the cover of a different game, they can't be on the show cover for at least three years. So allegedly, Acuna and J-Rod couldn't be on it this year because they were featured on these games that nobody plays. But even then, I still think a guy like Mookie or Seager would have been a better option. But that's just me. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite MLB The Show cover of all time is. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. I'm going to be making great MLB content throughout the season, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.